80 to 90 percent of rapes against women are committed by someone of the same racial background as the victim. So we're talking about intra-community <coughs> violence issues, no matter what racial ethnic community we're talking about. As anti-violence and racial justice activists, all of us, we are outraged by any sexual assaults that any student in the AU Center experiences, female or male, under any set of circumstances. And yes, men do get raped too. Rape and sexual assault are prevalent on college campuses, including our own. Most of them go unreported and are never litigated in court. So a little allusion to a police report has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Researchers estimate that one quarter to one third of women nationally will be sexually victimized during their college careers. Most disturbing, in a study of 6,000 students at 32 colleges in the U.S., 42% of rape victims told no one, no one, and only 5% of them reported it to the police. The fall semester of 2006 was not the first time that Spellman had to address alleged rapes. In 1996, when a Spellman sister charged that she had been gang raped at Morehouse College, in many ways I thought my world had ended. There I was, the president of a women's college, a place that should be safe for young women, and women not so young. And yet, here was a Spelman student claiming that she had endured what is surely the most barbaric, the most violent assault that anyone can experience. The guy that I knew the most from the situation was a pretty popular guy. I think the other, at least two of the other guys were on the basketball team, so they were pretty popular also. I remember from that time that um, the campus climate was, the, both campuses climates were very polarized. I was outraged as I heard not just some students, but members of the faculty and staff saying such things as, well, what was she doing over there? What was she wearing? She must have wanted it. These are responses to rape that we have heard repeatedly throughout history and her story. And perhaps it was unfair of me to assume that I would not hear such things coming from men associated with Morehouse College. I know these guys, how well do I know them? Are these people that I know well enough to say, you know, I'm completely certain there's no chance this could happen, I can vouch for their character? Not really, when you're in college, you know a lot of people pretty casually. You know them by name, you see them at parties, you know who they hang out with, you might know their major, but you don't really get to know people very well, unless they're people who are in your sort of close group. And none of these guys were in my close group. So I remember feeling like I didn't know anybody involved in the situation well enough to be able to say for sure what I thought could have happened. Um, with that said, I sort of just felt sort of unhappy at the response that I was seeing from other people. Why was she hanging out at a guy's room? Why was she in a room with a couple of guys? Clearly she's making this up. It really was eye-opening to think that this could, this could be you.
recent anti-rape protest at Spelman really showed us was how much work we still have left to do. Many of the students that they met at Morehouse took this um, as an attack on Morehouse students, took this as an attack on them as Morehouse men. I thought that the students at Morehouse would be a little more open to the fact that this is something that we're all going to have to fight together. this particular environment, Spelman and Morehouse, that the homosocial environments produce other kinds of really strange and peculiar behaviors. For males for, um, at Morehouse, I believe that the need to assert one's masculinity within an all-male setting causes them to engage in unhealthy actions and um, very degrading actions toward men and women. People were just angry that we came over to Morehouse, that the press showed up. Black women not having a voice when it came to rape. You know, we were tired of just being silenced and we felt like we had to do this. For them to go over there and just wear don't rape me t-shirts, I mean, I think it's horrible to assume that these men know what we're talking about. They probably didn't know there was a rape or anything at all. It made everything worse because they of course felt like we were persecuting them and in a way we were because we did just run over there and start screaming at them. I think most of the women that we received a lot of backlash from they're still in the mindset of like, you know, we have to be silent, you know, you're accusing them, you should stand with them, we're attacking black men, but, you know, it wasn't really about that. The whole thing that we were trying to do with the protest was change the culture of how we view rape and we view abuse in the black community. 30 years before I entered Spelman as a freshman, my dad entered Morehouse as a freshman. So when I decided to come to Spelman, I knew about this history. I guess I was hasty in making an assumption that it would still be that same vibrant community, that this whole sisterly, brotherly love thing would still be as strong as ever. I was kind of shocked as to what some of my sisters were saying about how we didn't have all the information. She probably was there doing something she shouldn't have been. Despite us being women ourselves, it's kind of like for a moment we forgot who we were inside and we just started labeling them as the majority of society labels us. I guess I could say that I'm disappointed sometimes by my sisters here, that um, they come off as really, um, as, as these organized women, which I mean, a lot of us are, but let's not make this a tea party. The situation is about rape. The subject is very hard to hear. The most common position that I heard was, okay, I kind of get what you're saying, Dr. King. Not necessarily, a lot of them did not get what the protesters were saying because they did sort of zone in on those young ladies who were very angry and who made statements that reflected their anger. Um, so after the protest, a lot of the guys who were like, well, you know, why they come on campus yelling? Your response is the typical response that those of us who are in a privileged group, whether it's racial groups, whether it's class groups, gender groups, the advantaged group typically responds to noise from the disadvantaged group that's supposed to bring your attention to the problems, the things that disadvantage that group, by saying, well, why are you so angry?